Hi, welcome to Dr. Colbert's Divine Health Podcast. I'm Mary Colbert. And I'm Dr. Colbert. Hey there. Hey guys, listen, this is one podcast you are going to want to listen to over and over again. Get your pen, your pads, and be sure and do this one thing. Share this with your family and friends. They are going to need this information. So please help us. We want to grow the podcast to get the information to people. This is something we are doing that's totally free to get the information out to the people. So we need you to be an extension of a message of good hope for people because we believe there is an answer for every disease. Don a natural believe, answer. A yes. natural answer. And food. Let your food be your right. medicine. Right. So we really believe this. And Don spends a lot of time, and I have to tell you, researching, reading, and he goes far and wide and deep and tall into things and really prays about it. And I believe the wisdom of God flows through him to bring you guys the most accurate information. So today osteoporosis. That is the topic. Why would we choose that? Don, I'm so excited about you sharing this with the people. We have a book called The Bible Cure for Osteoporosis. Go to our website, drcolbert.com. On there is the book and also the products that he's going to be talking about. We do offer and then we'll explain some are ours, some are not ours, uh, but you'll be able to get them on Amazon, or you'll be able to get the products, different venues. So let's deep dive into osteoporosis, Don. Let's go. Well, first of all, what is osteoporosis? And what would you say osteoporosis is? It just means... I would say bone loss. Yeah, bone. Well, it's brittle bones. But what happens with osteoporosis, it's progressive bone loss and actually means porous bones but it's a progressive loss of bone mass that leads to decreased bone density. It's defined actually by the gold standard, the DEXA scan, which is a a type of x-ray you do. Most women over 50 should have this done, especially if you have these risk factors we're going to discuss in a minute. But if your DEXA scan is minus 2.5 standard deviations from the norm, that or greater, you have osteoporosis. And we usually check three sites, we check the forearm, the spine, and the hip. And let me just let me paint the picture to people. Let's imagine you have a high rise. You've built a high rise. And they come to you and they say, Hey, you've got a problem. The frame in this high rise is corroding and eroding. The metal that holds the the rebar the exactly. rebar is starting to give way. Now the rebar has concrete around it, and that rebar is starting to rust and rust. be exposed to water, which happens to some of the condos here in Florida. Where Actually, we live. It happened to that one down in South Florida, down in Miami. Correct. The water from the pool deck eroded, and what happened it caused almost the complete collapse of the building. Well, guess what, folks? That's what your bones are to your body. And you know what happens, Mary, as people age. Uh, osteoporosis is a silent disease. You don't feel it, but what Mm -hmm. happens is your spine starts to be compressed, and then you start to lose vertical height. I've had women come in my office, and the first thing we do when we take vitals, we measure their height. And my girl will say, oh, you're 5'4", and the lady will look at us and say, no, I'm not. I'm 5'8". And she says, no, ma'am, you're 5'4". And she says, well, when's the last time you measured yourself? Well, 10 years ago, maybe. And she's lost four (laughs) inches of vertical height. Well, her frame, she's shrinking. But what's happening, her spine is being compressed. She's getting compression fractures. And with more compression fractures in her back, eventually comes what we call a dowager's hump. They develop a hump in their upper back. And eventually their neck becomes fused and they can't even look up. And this is what osteoporosis does. It literally causes the bones to get more and more brittle, especially affects the bones in the spine, causing compression fractures. And eventually, the the bone density in the hips, causing hip fractures and the form. But what is amazing about this, approximately one out of two, every two women, and one out of every four men age 50 and older will have an osteoporosis-related fracture in their lifetime. That is crazy. My mother, who's 86, fractured her hip to approximately two years ago during COVID and had to go in a uh, hospital and have uh, hip surgery to pin the hip. And then she had to have rehab. And she was in that hospital 
for one month, and they wouldn't allow but one person to come in the room with her because it was during that COVID. You know, Don, what was amazing to me, I mean, your mom was 84 at the time. She's now 86. But at the time, she was 84. And all she was doing was in the backyard giving water to the dog. And we think maybe what happened is the dog may have jumped on her, and she just fell down. It's just a simple little fall. Simple little fall. But and it fractured boom, her hip. Fractured her hip. Because the bones had become so brittle. brittle. And so we're going to talk about what we've done to strengthen her bones and see what you can do to check to see if you're getting osteoporosis. And if you have it, we need to reverse it. Yes, you can reverse it. Now, most doctors prescribe bisphosphonates, which are medications that actually thicken the bones. They include Boniva, Actinel, Reclass. Let's see, what else? Uh, Fosamax. All of these are bisphosphonates. They do have side effects. And a lot of women come to see me and they, they've been on these meds. They hate them because they can cause esophagitis, acid reflux, esophageal ulcers. And so a lot of people start having this heartburn indigestion, which is a very common side effect of these medications. And also what happens with other women is rare, but some women can get osteonecrosis of the jawbone where their jaw starts to deteriorate and they lose all their teeth. Wait a minute. As a result of taking these? Things? Yes, that's a rare You're side effect. You're trying to save your bones and you begin losing and your teeth? Yes, that's a rare side wow. effect called osteonecrosis of the jaw. And it's a rare complication of bisphosphonate therapy. But again, that's what happens when a person goes in and maybe gets an uh, implant and they've been on these uh, bisphosphonate meds, they're more, more susceptible to that. Another, some people get these severe musculoskeletal pains in their bones and joints or muscle after taking it. I've had patients have this, and they have to go off of it because the pains are so severe. And so, again, these are just common side effects. One of the rare side effects, too, is atypical femur fractures. Now, your femur or your thigh bone is the, probably the strongest bone in your body. And it's one of the most painful fractures you can have. But after being on these bisphosphonates for three to five years, some people have spontaneous fractures of their femur. That's crazy. Because it forms thicker bones, but many times it's brittle. It's brittle bone. So for this reason, we use a natural approach. And so we want to first identify if you're, if, do you have these risk factors for osteoporosis? And if you're over 50 or if you have a lot of these risk factors, some women need to do it at 45. Like if you've had a hysterectomy earlier, had your ovaries out or no hormones, natural hormones, that is. And so these are the main risk factors, being blonde or redheaded with fair skin, also Caucasian and Asian, you're at an increased risk of osteoporosis. If you're thin, weighing less than 125 pounds, that's also a risk factor. Short statue and small bones is another risk factor. Never been pregnant. Those pregnancy hormones help your bones, women. And if you've never been pregnant, you may be at an increased risk of osteoporosis. Now, again, let me explain. You don't just wake up one day with osteoporosis. It's a, uh, you go through osteopenia. Osteopenia is mild bone loss, minus 1.0 to minus 2.49 T-score. And we can actually measure it on a DEXA scan. And if they say, oh, you've got a T-score of minus 1.0, well, we need to start right away strengthening your bones with bone strengthening exercises, with supplements, with food, and with avoiding the uh, excessive foods that cause bone loss. One of those main ones being sodas. And we're going to talk about sodas. You say, sodas, I drink sodas every meal. Well, sodas are high in phosphoric acid that literally eats away your bones. And so that's what we do. If you want to clean the battery terminal off your car, use a soda and it cleans that acid off. But when you take that soda, that phosphoric acid in there, literally cannibalizes your bones, women and men too. But especially in women, they have a higher risk of osteoporosis. But other risk factors include a family history of osteoporosis. Women, if your mom had osteoporosis and it started at a young age, please get your DEXA scan. Let's get you on a program to reverse it. You say, what program do I follow? Listen to this podcast, take some notes, and or read my book, The New Bible Cure for Osteoporosis. Also, if you're inactive, sedentary lifestyle, see exercise specific. There's specific bone building exercises that include like walking, running, jumping, calisthenics, weightlifting. So I want to talk about these bone building. Bicycle riding. 
Bicycling helps some, but not nearly to the degree as weight-bearing exercise. Okay. Now, gotcha. If you're in the pool, you say, I do pool exercise. You're not going to build bone in the pool. Yes, ec- cycling's good, but better is weight training, calisthenics, push-ups, squats, leg presses. Those are bone builders, great okay. bone builders. Or just jumping, jumping rope. That builds bone great. Also, smokers. It may smokers, tear up your knees, but... <laughs> well, again, again, that's okay. why we say we don't want to okay. hurt your joints. Yeah. So that's why I like just good weightlifting with good form. You may need right. a personal trainer so that you do the exercises appropriately or just read the book. I talk about what to do. You can just do push-ups, build bone. Squats, okay, a bill's bone. Smoking causes bone loss. Also, excessive alcohol causes bone loss. Excessive physical exercise causes bone loss. Now, listen, men and women, excessive stress or depression causes bone loss by high cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone caused from excessive stress, unrelenting stress, or from depression. It literally cannibalizes your bones. Now, let me give you an example of what, how to resist the stress and how to prevent it. And this is a common prescription I recommend for every patient because if you have a lot of stress or if you are depressed, you have high cortisol and you are unknowingly cannibalizing your bones. Get your 10 belly laughs a day. It turns off the stress response and it'll turn down the cortisol. So how do you get 10 belly laughs a day? Well, first of all, let's look at the scripture. Proverbs 17:22 says... A merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit or a depressed spirit dries the bones. It literally is telling you it dried bones is osteoporosis. Isn't okay? that amazing? And That's so amazing. when you get those 10 belly laughs, you unleash one of the most powerful systems in the body for healing. You turn down and usually turn off the stress response and you turn on the relaxation response so your body's able to heal, even your bones. So I love to give to my patients a script that says, I want you to do 10 belly laughs a day, and here's how I want you to do it. I give them a prescription. I want you to listen to these few guys. I call them, these are uh, five names or six names of some of the funniest, clean comedians I know of, and we listen to these over and over. And so these are the ones I really like. Number one is Jeff Foxworthy. He's the redneck comedian. He's, he is just one of the best, funniest guys ever, as well as a Christian comedian called Jeff Allen. This guy is hilarious. You'll get your 10 belly laughs within five or 10 minutes. You Jeff Allen. You can watch Allen. all these on YouTube. On YouTube, yes. Yeah. And another is Brian Regan, R-E-G-A-N, not Reagan, but Regan. And my, this funniest video is I Walked on the Moon. We were just listening to that the other night, and I got at least... I think 50 belly laughs, 50. And this is pretty clean. This is all pretty clean. Right. So and, I love and that. Now, the funniest man, I think, is John Panetti, P-I-N-E-T-T-E. He's on YouTube. He's on Netflix. He's on Amazon. And what is so funny about John Panetti is he is not making fun of anyone else. He makes fun of himself. And it just makes it, you know, non-offensive. So that's pretty cool. And one of the funniest is Jim Gaffigan, G-A-F-F-I-G-A-N. He is, again, he's on YouTube, Netflix, Amazon, all of these. And most of these are free. So you can just watch it for, you know, 15 minutes at night, get your belly laughs, and I go into a deep sleep, okay? Right. And then we'll usually listen to some, uh, one of our preacher buddies at night, which is really good. And it just not puts us to sleep, but it puts us in a real peaceful sleep. Okay, so anyway, you've got to you've got to activate that belly laughter, and you got to turn off the stress. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Also, other things that literally stress your bones and will put you into either osteopenia or osteoporosis is high homocysteine levels. I commonly check this in my women, especially if they have osteoporosis. Homocysteine is a toxic amino acid that causes osteoporosis, bone loss. It also causes memory loss. It also causes accelerated atherosclerosis, yet very few doctors ever check for it. I check now most of my patients. I actually have a whole section of my new book I'm writing now called The Brain Zone because it's critical for your memory. This toxic amino acid literally destroys brain cells but it also cannibalizes your bones. It's critical that we check the level. I just had a level come back this morning on a patient. It was 15. Now, the normal level is anything less than 11. 
But we try and get that level down to seven or below so that it doesn't cannibalize the bones wow. or cause plaque in the arteries or cause brain degeneration. How old was this patient with the This 15? patient was 50, 50. Wow. And so and they have, uh, ex, you know, osteoporosis. Yeah. So again, we have to block it. You block it with some active forms of B vitamins. I just put them on, I put this patient, I, put, I see this all the time, all the time in my practice. I put them on an active B complex that has the active forms of the bees or just enhanced multi has all the active forms of the bees and one twice a day. That's that, We've got the best multivitamin. We love it. One of the things I want people to know is Don is not just speaking out of just research that other people have shared or told him. He's speaking out of years of experience and putting patients through programs and reversing osteoporosis. Folks, he has reversed hundreds of patients. I would say thousands, hundreds. Mary. Thousands, okay. <laughs> thousands by now. I was trying now. to be conservative. Okay. So he is, he's not just speaking out of, he thinks this works. He is speaking because he knows this well, works. Well, we've done it, but we put a whole program together. Again, we address the activity level. We address the nutrition. We address the hormones. And we address the emotional, spiritual aspect of it because it involves all of the above. But right now we're talking about what literally cannibalizes the bones. High homocysteine is one. Long-term use of steroids like cortisone or prednisone or decadron, a lot of these COVID meds that they were using are steroids, which can literally eat away your bones. Also, uh, long-term use of anticonvulsants like Dilantin and all these anticonvulsant meds. High sugar intake is a major cause of bone loss, as well as high salt intake. If you're eating lots of sugar, women, or if you're eating lots of salty foods, men, it's funny that men crave salt, women crave sugar. I see this almost all the time. Mm -hmm. When you're craving sugar, you're almost always insulin resistant which means you have high insulin levels. It programs you to crave sugar and carbs and starches. And so we break that now with our diets and all a little supplement that literally turns down and tur usually turns off those sugar cravings. And also we have a new peptide medicine available, which is amazing, which we use to treat our pre-diabetics. And it's called uh, Rebelsis. And, and that's through an injection? No, it's through a pill. It's oh, now okay. a pill. It just it came right. out. It's only been less than a year. Okay. But this is working amazing at pre-diabetics at bringing insulin levels down, restoring blood sugar levels to normal, and losing belly fat and controlling appetite. You say, wow, I want that. Well, if you've got pre-diabetes, I can prescribe it or your doctor can. But you can, we can't prescribe it with you calling the right. office. Right, yeah, yeah, can't prescribe you have to be a patient. <laughs> right. Okay, now, other things that cannibalize your bones, like I talked about that high intake of soda. It contains that phosphoric acid that literally eats away your bones. And there's other high phosphorus foods like excessive proteins, excessive beans, and things like that that can cannibalize your bones. Beans actually contain calcium and magnesium and fiber, but beans contain a, a substance called phytates. And phytates interfere with your body's ability to absorb calcium. Now, what you do to get rid of those phytates in your beans, peas, and lentils, you just soak your beans in water, usually overnight, and it gets rid of most of the phytates. And then I pressure cook the beans. So that way, beans will not bind your calcium. Other high-protein foods, if you eat excessive amounts of meat, high in phosphorus, which can actually cause bone loss, too. We talked about the salty foods. Salt ca causes your body to actually lose calcium and can lead to bone loss, as well as a wheat bran. Wheat bran also contains these phytates, which keeps your body from absorbing calcium. So that's why I'm not a big fan of wheat, pasta, whole wheat. I'm not, I don't like wheat at all because it irritates the gut. You can read about my gut zone book. Okay, and another real common thing that I see that causes bone loss are estrogen blockers. We see so many women who have had breast cancer and they come in estrogen blockers like tamoxifen, anastrozole, arimidex, fomera, any of those estrogen blockers. They say you have to be on them for 10 years. And I, I, I've monitored these patients' uh, DEXA scans over the years, and it's amazing how these meds cause severe osteoporosis quite rapidly. So what we do to offset that is we have to have some key nutrients. 
we have to have testosterone. I actually use a lot of testosterone pellets with anastrozole so it doesn't uh, aromatize to estrogen, and we build bone. And we're able to literally give these women their lives back because so many, so many of these estrogen blockers cause bone pain, joint pain. And so we have the answer. We can either use testosterone with a Remedex cream or we can use pellets, which help tremendously these women with the bone pain and the bone loss caused by the estrogen blocker. So again, these are just common things we see in so many people. Now, I can tell usually when a person walks in my office, Mary, if they've got osteoporosis because they've lost height. And that's one thing that people, many times they don't even measure themselves yearly, but women measure yourself. If you're losing height, please get that DEXA scan. That's a cardinal sign that you're losing bone. Also, if you're getting short of breath, I have seen so many little women. I've got women in their 80s, 90s, and even 100, and their rib cage is sitting on their pelvic bone. And, oh, and they wow. say, and they say oh, Dr. Colbert, why do I have this belly? I said, what's happened is your spine has compressed so much that now your rib cage is sitting on your pelvic bone and you don't have a waist. And they think they have a tummy, a gut. I said, no, that's excess skin because your spine has accordionized, like an accordion. Oh, my gosh. And, I would have never thought about right, that. Right. And so what happens, these people come in with compressed organs and they're short of breath. Also, many develop a dowager's hump, that hump on their upper back, or their scoliosis gets worse and they can't breathe as well. And also, many develop periodontal disease. They start losing teeth. You know, we used to say, have a baby lose a tooth. Well, that accelerates after age 50. People start to lose their teeth because they don't have enough calcium or enough vitamin D or K2 or enough bone mass, and they start pulling the calcium out of their teeth, and so they lose teeth, see? So Wow. I mean, you know what? Tell you the truth, I haven't really given a whole lot myself to the thought of the importance of our skeletal <laughs> But well, boy, it's critical. And, and Mary, I, like, I yeah. try and tell my women, and I tell this every time I see my, the women that come in my office, and men with low testosterone are at increased risk. Remember, one in two women will eventually develop an osteoporosis-related fracture, one in four men. And so men with low testosterone get fractures, easy to prevent. I just put my men usually on some testosterone cream and... Uh, or, and or a shot, a low-dose shot. And women, same thing. I can use a testosterone pellet or testosterone cream or a little injection once a week. Like my mom, I give her injection once a week. We've gotten her bones strong by this that little testosterone injection, and it doesn't even hurt. She doesn't even feel it. My brother gives it to her each week, and it really helps to build her bone mass up. Now, like I said, the test to do is the DEXA scan. It's called the Dual Energy X-ray Absorptionometry which is simply an x-ray that measures your bone density. And it's now, does Medicare pay that, do you think? Usually Medicare? they do. Because yes. that's a prevention, yeah. That Absolutely. Would... So, again, it's real simple little test. You need to have it done. Now, I want to get into some supplements because, like I say, first we identify the foods that literally rob you of your calcium in your bones, like the salt and the sugar and also the, the, the uh, wheat and the bran, the wheat bran that literally robs your body. Also, a lot of people say, well, I drink lots of milk. I dr eat lots of cheese. Those are high calcium. But these foods also uh, are acidic foods, and you can actually lose calcium from these foods. And what so you, it's not actually putting calcium back into the bone like you're thinking. Yes. Countries that have the highest consumption of dairy also have the highest rates of osteoporosis. Now, that's nuts. And that's what, and they say, everyone's saying, drink milk, eat cheese. I'm saying, no, no, what no. What about yogurt? <laughs> well, again, a little bit of yogurt is actually really good for you. But if you have yogurt from cows, that's inflammatory. And it has more casein A1 that's more inflammatory to your body. Whereas goat or sheep yogurt plain without the sugar is okay in moderation. I, I have goat or sheep yogurt I know, plain that's what you have. with my berries, and that's but, great. But the regular goat, I'm uh, not goat, but the regular yogurt doesn't help. The dairy the... is very acid forming. And uh, again, that's why too much dairy is not good for you and actually okay. invites more bone loss into your body, gotcha. as well as spinach and, and kale 
And turnip greens and mustard greens are high oxalic acid foods that actually keep calcium from being absorbed. They bind it. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on, Dr. Colbert. <laughs> you just said a mouthful. Exactly. Hold on, just a second. Did you say kale? Yeah. Kale is like the biggest promoted thing that right. you see on TV now. And everywhere you go, you know, kale is the new buzzword in the health. And you're telling me that kale actually prevents your body from absorbing the necessary? Your body doesn't absorb calcium as well from foods that are high in oxalates like spinach and kale and r- rhubarb and turnip greens and mustard greens and all of these So that greens. just brings you right back to moderation. Moderation. Moderation is the key. You do too Gee. much of anything so and you're going to get in trouble. So some people are taking kale and making kale chips and they well, eat their again, kale chips. So, so and... Kale is good. Now, it is a very mm-hmm. healthy veggie, but too much of anything is not good. So you say, well, what I do, you want to eat more veggies. You want to uh, have moderation in meats. Variety is good. You want to have your berries. The My Beyond Keto, which is the Mediterranean Keto Diet, I believe is the healthiest diet you can go on, but you're going to have to supplement. So we've got to talk about some We're going to talk about supplements, but first you said something. Salt. Why would salt be such a problem in helping you with your bones? Well, we have known for years that excessive salt intake, which most, most Americans consume way too much, it literally cannibalizes your bones, similar to sugar. Too much sugar and too much salt literally prevent calcium from being absorbed. What's too much? Well, again, <laughs> most people are taking in uh, over three grams of salt a day, which is quite a bit. Is that a bag of potato chips? Well, again, you start <laughs> measuring your sodium. I, w- I try and take in less than one gram a day because salt will also re- usually start to raise your blood pressure. It causes swelling, and it also cannibalizes your bone. The foods highest in salt are like soups, cheeses, uh, salted chips, salted nuts, anything you know that's uh, processed. Like most all soups are real high in salt. Most all processed foods are real high okay, in salt. Okay, so a healthy amount for someone who's like 50 and older, a salt amount would be... Well, the lower the better is what I tell people. Now, again, I'm not saying you can never have salt. You know, one gram is ideal if you can have, if, if you can limit it. But for some, three grams, okay? Just start low and go slow and you can eventually uh, get to the dose that, uh, and you can monitor your, your blood pressure, monitor your DEXA scan to see. But uh, the salt causes your body to lose calcium. So, again, we want (sighs) to limit it or else you're going to eventually, if you have lots of salt, like some people are eating 10 grams of salt a day. If you can decrease it to five, you'll do yourself a great service doing that. Okay, what I think when I hear one gram, I'm thinking about one little Cubic no, I'm talking a gram. Of no, a gram of salt is like a teaspoon a day. Thank you. To a teaspoon, something now, like see, that. you just helped me and the rest of the world by painting the picture. Okay, so one teaspoon of salt. Gotcha. So okay. also what we want to do is, again, get our diet straight by understanding these are the main foods that cause bone loss. The sodas, that's probably one of the worst. Excessive sugar, excessive salt. Uh, excessive animal proteins. Those people that eat huge steaks and too much protein has phosphorus that, again, that will Mm. affect your bones. These are acid-forming foods, whereas more veggies and more healthy oils like olive oil and avocado oil and nuts and seeds are great. Okay, now I am faithful taking the supplements that we have for bone. So is that a good combination to fight against? Well, Some of my salt-loving sugar Yes, loving. absolutely it will. Absolutely. And okay. so let's, we want to... I've uh, got hope. <laughs> so again, let's talk. We also want to hit some exercises first uh, because, again, we talked about the weight-bearing exercises. That's been known for many years to build bone density. And so the, the key exercises that build bone are going to be walking, weightlifting, hiking, strength training, like push-ups and lunges and squats. Climbing stairs is great. Plyometrics, aerobics, jumping rope, or just playing basketball, volleyball, gymnastics. A lot of people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s can't do that, but just getting out walking and doing some calisthenics or or weightlifting on machines is perfect for building bone. Okay, so we got to put the right steps together. 
in order to, you know, get our diet right, our exercise. And how many days a week, you say? Well, I would do some strengthening exercise at least two days and preferably three and do some walking, some aerobics, or I would do that four to five days a week. Again, that's, that's really important for you. If we can do that, then we can, we're on the right path to building bones. Now, we want to talk about supplements because supplements are absolutely critical. We first start with calcium. Now, again, we talked about calcium from many different sources from dairy. And again, those are sources of calcium. But again, it comes with a negative. They're acid forming. They're inflammatory. And so we like a calcium supplement. You can use calcium citrate, calcium carbonate. There's many different forms of uh, chelated calcium. And again, you want to combine your calcium with magnesium. Magnesium helps to drive the calcium in the bones. So magnesium, calcium, and vitamin D3. And want to get your vitamin D3 optimized with a blood test, ideally, to a level of 55 to 80. That's the sweet spot for building bone. Okay, so write that down. That's an important point right there. And for many people, they, to do that, they only need about 2,000 units of calcium a day. Others need 5,000. Some need even 10,000 units a day. It's rare, but some need that. And what vitamin D does it transports the calcium from the intestines into the blood, and it decreases the excretion of calcium from the kidneys and helps the bones to mineralize. And so vitamin D is required for your body to absorb calcium. So without enough vitamin D, you can't absorb calcium and phosphorus in order to maintain normal blood levels of calcium and phosphorus, which help build bone, okay? So the vitamin, the calcium is critical, and we've talked about calcium, the sources, and how much calcium. Now, again, this is a little tricky because they've had some studies that shown that excessive calcium can actually cause, can be associated with calcifying the arteries and with heart problems. Some studies have shown that. So we want to, uh, the recommendations of postmenopausal women is 1,200 milligrams a day. And so if you want to follow what the postmenopausal, what the recommendations are, you know, it's simply that 1,200. I personally, for most of my women, I find you don't need that much. A lot of calcium can also be associated with kidney stones. And I see a lot of my patients have had kidney stones, so I dial it back to 600 to 750 milligrams of calcium a day. And I drive the calcium into the bones with magnesium and with vitamin K2. K2 is a very important vitamin that most people are deficient in. Because the greatest source of K2 comes from generally a, a dish that we don't eat here in the U.S. from natto, which is fermented soybeans that they serve in Japan. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. And so, but K2 is this very important vitamin that takes the calcium out of your arteries and it drives it into the bones. It literally regulates calcium metabolism. And what happens after age 50, the weirdest thing happens, Mary, we start to calcify our arteries and we start to decalcify our bones. Right, and so crazy. the body starts to pull, because we don't have enough hormones, so the body starts to pull the calcium out of the bones, and it goes into the arteries and starts to calcify the arteries. I see this all the time. Well, what happens, the vitamin K2 reverses that, and it takes that calcium that was in the arteries, and it starts to drive it into the bones. So that little bitty pill I take once a day, yeah. our omega vitamin K2. K2 correct. Is correcting that? Yes. Now, I have you on a, a dose. If you have osteopenia with a DEXA scan of uh, minus 1.0 to minus 2.49, you only need usually uh, the vitamin K2, uh, 100 micrograms twice a day. If you have osteoporosis with a T-score of minus, uh, greater than minus 2.5, we put you on a mega K2 which is our Mega K2. Now you get it from Life Extension, and it's uh, 45 milligrams a day, and it drives it in there. And also we put patients on our Silical 1, which is, uh, you can get that on our website. We have the best bone supplements. We really do. Let me just stop and tell the people about uh, how we got the bone supplements. Sure. A really well-renowned orthopedic surgeon. Dr. Price, right. Dr. Price. He had developed these products years ago, and Don believed in the product so much because they saw such an amazing results with patients on these products that Don even went on a television program promoting it for him. He asked him to come on as a guest. 
So years go by, and then Dr. Price, he had some, you know, he was aging and his family issues. Well, his wife, he helped his wife overcome osteoporosis, and we've helped a lot of people using his products over the years with osteopenia and osteoporosis. And even our, our grandson, Jarrett, fractured his forearm, and he w- went on this, these products, and it, uh, the orthopedist couldn't believe how fast it healed his fractured bone. <laughs> Remember? So what happened is the, um, Dr. Price wanted to go in retirement, didn't run a, run a vitamin company anymore. So he called Don and said, hey, Don, I'm going to close this down. Don goes, no, don't close this down. Oh, my gosh, the people need these supplements. And he goes, well, if you want to take it over, I'm willing to let you take it over. So we worked out an arrangement with him to take over the company. And this has been years ago. So we've been selling the product, but he developed it. Dr. Price is the one who actually developed these products as an orthopedic surgeon. One thing he noticed as an orthopedic surgeon is he recognized the flexibility that as you age, you lose flexibility in your bones. And that is one of the reasons it breaks. So our product, the bone supplements that we have, actually helps your bones stay limber and flexible, pliable pliable like it is when you're young. Well, it's kind of like you were talking about the rebar, you know, in the building, the Mm -hmm. skyscraper, how it starts to crumble our frame. It's interesting that our bones are composed of this collagen matrix. It's like Mm -hmm. the rebar surrounded by the calcium and the minerals, like the uh, the calcium salts and the mineral phosphorus salts and all that make up the bone. That's kind of like the concrete around the rebar. So it creates a, a flexibility and a strength that's uh, reinforced. So our bones are really strong and pliable, so they're less likely to break. Kind of like a green stick fracture when a kid fractures a bone. It doesn't just crack in half. It just kind of cracks like a green stick, just barely. And so the bone's so strong and resilient and flexible, it doesn't right. totally crack So you can through. go to drcolbert.com, and you can get our bone supplement on there. It's Silical 1 bone supplement and Silical 2. Two. Two. Yeah, and that's a great program for most anyone with that's wanting to protect their bones. And you say, how much do I take? Generally, we put, a, put most of our patients on Silical 1, two twice a day and sometimes three twice a day. You say, well, that's not 1,200 milligrams. I said, well, again, if you have the K2, you don't need that much usually for most because if you take a lot of calcium, you're more prone to kidney stones and also calcifications now, in your arteries. Now, we don't sell K2 on our website. Well, it's in our Silical 2. It is in our Silical 2. Yeah. Oh, it is in the Silical 2. So you don't need to go buy mega vitamin 12. Well, not yet unless you have osteoporosis. Then we add the mega vitamin K2 just one a day. And it works okay, great. so you add that to it. Right. Uh, but we don't sell that on the web. Right, correct. So here's here's what we do. For most, I just start most of my women and men. Uh, uh, men usually don't need it because they rarely have osteoporosis. We just Silical 1, two twice a day. Silical 2, two a day. And then if a woman has osteoporosis, I, and also I'll add the vitamin D. We get their vitamin D optimized, usually at least 2,000 units a day, maybe 5,000, depending on their level. And then if a woman has osteoporosis, I add the mega vitamin K2 with 45 milligrams, one a day, and the strontium. Now, the strontium is one of the most amazing nutrients at building bone. I've been using it on patients for about 25 years, and we're going to talk about it in a minute. But we use about 680 milligrams a day, which is usually three capsules, once a day, empty stomach. And that also dries it in the bone. And this is the key recipe for restoring your bone with testosterone Mm. and we got to put that with it so it's really simple silical one usually two twice a day silical two two a day mega k2 for osteoporosis one a day strontium three a day empty stomach vitamin d and okay you just said carblanc empty stomach on that one that does not play well with others i tell patients that's like thyroid there's one hormone you got to take by itself it's thyroid strontium is a mineral that doesn't play well with others either. It has to be taken empty stomach in order to absorb it. To okay, get so effects. which one was that that's on an empty stomach? Strontium. strontium. Is that in the silicon? Strontium two? is a mineral. No, that's a separate one we use for osteoporosis. We don't sell that one. We don't sell that. You get that online. Oh, okay. And so strontium is just a powerful mineral. And it's not the radioactive strontium. 
This strontium has been shown in studies to increase the bone mineral density in the lumbar spine by as much as 14.4% and in the femoral neck by 8.3%. I have been using this for decades with tremendous results. Now we're able to combine this with our calcium, with our magnesium, because remember, magnesium drives that calcium in the bone with our vitamin K2. And again, when you put these together with testosterone, it is absolutely amazing. But there's also, so I know there's a lot, and people are saying, this is too much. i got to talk about testosterone because testosterone is another key hormone that helps the bones. Okay, Don, this is, you've just got so much information here. We're going to do this in two parts. We thought we could do it in one part, but we're going to do it in two so that people can take time to digest, listen to this, write down everything you're saying because you're just saying such a mouthful. So thank you for listening to part one in osteoporosis. Yeah, we don't want to overwhelm you. We're going to kind of repeat this, explain it, and so that you can write everything down so you can get these key important bullet points. We want to make sure you have them. So we're going to have a part two so that we don't overwhelm you. And let me just reiterate to you, get the book, The Bible Cure for Osteoporosis. You can go to our website and get Silical 1 and 2 for the bone. The other products, the Mega uh, Vitamin K2, you'll have to go to Amazon from Life Extension. And then, uh, or another, another, a high dose, you can go to the health food stores and get it. And then Strontinam, you'll have to get that from the website, not us, but on the internet or your health food store. Um, But the two bone supplements we have are phenomenal. They're great. And I highly, highly recommend it. I've already promoted the book. I just promoted the book. Okay, good. So, okay, we'll see you again. We're going to go ahead and end this podcast. And we pray for you that you walk in divine health. And And remember, a merry heart does good. I tell people even better than any medicine, and especially those bisphosphonates like Actinel, Boniva, and Fosamax. And, (laughs) And a broken spirit, depression, too much stress dries the bone, literally invites osteoporosis into your bones. You don't want to do it. Have a merry heart. Let the stresses go and just rest in God. Okay. God God bless bless. you. We'll talk to you in a little bit with part two.